Hey, what's up guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and this week we're gonna talk about how to make generative paths so that we can build lines and reveals and all sorts of stuff. I got my espresso today, so let's go. All right, so today we're gonna be making this thing. We have uh, a reveal in here and these little lines and stuff. This is based similarly to an L system, and all of this is basically made out of that same one comp right here. So if we click there, we can actually see it. And then we're gonna open up this controller. And you can see I can change this completion slider and it basically will draw these boxes closed. And the reason why they animate so weirdly is because this is actually just a single stroke and right now we're offsetting it. So this is actually not a closed shape, it's just a single path. So if we change these settings back down, we make this offset back to zero, you can see that those are the lines that we're starting with. And we have a bunch of different other settings. We have a random seed that we can change. We have how many steps we take. We can change the length between the steps. We can change the stroke width. And again, we have the offset, which will let us do that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna set this back to zero just for now so we can see what's going on. Set this back to like two. Turn all these guys down. And again, we have that completion slider so you can actually draw the whole thing out from zero to 100. Most of these are just linked up to like trim paths. Uh, stroke is to stroke width. The offset is to an offset effect that's inside this path. So you can close this down. You can see how this is set up. We have our path and our stroke in this first shape. Then we have a trim paths and then we have offset. The offset has to come after the trim because if you trim first, it trims the actual offset instead, which might be what you want. And if that's the case, then flip those around. But that is not what we're looking for. So we're gonna go back with that. So now if we bring this back down, you can see that it animates as blocks. We're going to go through everything in here pretty quickly. If you want more information about how everything is built in this project file, you can grab it from our website for a dollar. Mostly we're concerned with the path expression that we have in here. So let's check that out. All right. So let's take a look at our expression that's in our path. And that will be where we use these other three sliders, a random seed, our steps and our max length. So the first thing we're going to do obviously is bring in those three sliders. So we're setting S equal to our random seed. We're setting N for number equal to our step slider, and then we are going to set L equal to our max length slider. So then we're gonna set seed random to S comma true. Setting this value to true means that we won't get a new random number every frame. And S is again, obviously the actual seed. So then we're gonna set up a variable for points, and that's gonna be set to an empty array. And then we're gonna set X and Y equal to zero. And then we're gonna push that first X, Y point into that array. So we're gonna do points dot push, open parentheses for that and then open and close brackets around X comma Y. So our starting point will always be zero, zero. Then we're gonna set up a loop for I equals zero, while I is less than N, which is the number of steps that we're gonna do, I plus plus. Then we're gonna set up a variable D, and that's gonna equal math.floor random L. So from zero to our max length. Then we're gonna set up a variable for our rotation, so that's gonna be variable R equals math.floor random to four. So it'll be a number from zero to four, so they're gonna bring up a switch statement and we're gonna switch on R. So in case zero, we're only gonna to move to the right. So we're gonna take our X value, whatever it currently is, and we're gonna to add to that D. Then we're gonna break out of the switch statement. So then for case one, if R is equal to one, we're gonna go downward. So we're gonna go Y plus that distance and then break out. And two will go to the left. So we're gonna do X minus the distance and we'll break out. And three will be up. So we'll do Y minus the distance and then we'll break. You can add a default to the switch statement if you want, but it's really unlikely that we're gonna get four and the worst thing that's gonna happen is just you're gonna get two points in the same spot. After all of that, whatever X and Y is at the time, we're gonna add that to our array again. So we're gonna do points.push X, Y. Then once we're done with all of that, we're gonna create a path and we don't want it to be closed. So we're gonna pass in points and then two empty arrays and then false. False telling create path that we would like this path to be open. And that is how we get our path. And again, as I said, everything else is pretty much linked up directly to these expression sliders. Then they're all added into a essential graphics panel, which I already have in my layout. And if we undock that, I don't know why it's actually docked. Uh, we will see here that uh, we have our random seed steps, max length, stroke, offset, and completion. And outside of here, we are using that pretty much everywhere else. You can see this takes a little bit to render, but I'd say it's worth it. So obviously that's how these lines are built, but how is this thing revealed? Well, we have another comp in here, down here it's called reveal, you know. Why is this opening up in a layer? Let me click this back over here to my regular workbench screen 
Because for some reason, that reveal is opening up as a layer, and it still is. I don't know why. All right, we're going to open layer source. I don't think I've ever done that in the entirety of me ever using this program, but hey. All right, so this is what I have in here. I have the cicada down here at the bottom, and it is set to be a guide layer so we don't ever see it. And I basically took this, used all my controls in here to add different pieces on top of this to basically fill in this shape. So if we play this whole thing, you can see it kind of does that until everything is filled. At the end, a couple of bigger passes come through and there's a couple of spots left open which kind of add to the whole thing at the end. All right, and that is basically it. So let's take a look at how the rest of the look was built. So again, we have these reveals and the cicada itself is alpha matted to those. We have a layer on the back it's background that is white because we're going to invert later on. And so if we turn just these two here, you can see we have the cicada drawn on and this one has nothing at all changed with it. It's holding the adjustment layer above it, which just inverts it and then adds a minimax on top. Then we have another layer of that cicada, which also has minimax applied, but to a slightly less amount. And it is also being track mounted by that same reveal and they are offset a little bit in time from each other. So that's why we get these like white flashes. And then when we turn this guy on, so you can actually see it. It draws back in a little bit more of the original drawing. So we're gonna turn on these other texture layers. So one of these has Minimax on it, the other one does not. It's Minimax and Extract just to kind of drop out any kind of the gray tones back there. But then we add a little bit of them back in with this top layer and its opacity is a little bit lower. This is just a texture layer, it looks like this. That's how I actually wanted to open the layer panel. Anyway, then we have a bunch of these L systems. You know, I'm gonna call them J systems because they are Joe systems. That's dumb. All right, anyway, so let's turn all these back on. You can kind of see that they start to draw in. Then above that, we have this blur and grade, which actually should just be called vector blur because that's all this one is. I just duplicated that out before. So we'll turn that back on. Then we have a gradient, and that thing is actually off. But it looks like this. It's just done with a gradient ramp. Then I have this overlay footage here to add some color back to this thing. And those are just some lens flare things that I shot a while ago. And then above that, I have a vignette. And then we have some noise and then we have a blur and grade layer and that kind of brings it all together. We have a camera lens blur looking at that gradient layer and then we have Lumetri on top and we're basically just using one of the included After Effects LUTs and those can just be found by clicking this menu and we have SL Blue Cold. I warmed up the highlights just a little bit and that's pretty much it. So we unsolo all of this junk and we're back to our original frame and After Effects is lighting up green to tell me that it won't be able to play this. Hey, sometimes you're surprised. All right, so that's it. I hope you guys can take this and run with it. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do with this because you pretty much have paths. So anything you can do to paths, you can do to this thing. Anyway, if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe. If you'd like to help support what we do, check out patreon.com slash workbench. Make sure to keep up the blog at workbench.tv. And as always, I'm Joe, and we'll see you next time. Bye.